Can you hear me, sis? Can you hear me clearly? I don't know if you can. Can you hear me, sister? Can you? Um, My bad. I was, I'm over there answering. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you good. <laughs> I hear you. No, like, uh, when you said like, oh, I must have been back. <laughs> I said she must be muted. <laughs> yes, the time away. I know, like, right? I, I hear you. I hear you, brother. <laughs> oh man, yeah, appreciate you, sis, man. Oh man, How appreciate you. You still what now? No, I said, oh, I said, oh, you're welcome. Make sure I uh, make sure the uh, okay. host so you can pull so you can share. Okay, appreciate it.
Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings, brothers and sisters. I pray all is well. Um, I pray that the grace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus have been strengthened your court to his will and his purpose. Uh, most importantly, brothers and sisters, I pray that you know that our Lord is faithful, okay? Uh, my brothers and sisters, I got a word for you today. Uh, but before we get into the word of the Lord today, let us pray so our heart and get into a place to receive all that King Jesus have to pour into us today, okay? Um, so without further ado, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Wise Father, we repent of our, repent of our sins. Please forgive us our sins who come before your throne. Father, we pray that you remove anything that have offended you, any iniquity, Lord, anything, Father, that we have done to grieve your heart, that it keep us from connecting with you in this moment. Lord Jesus, we want you to increase us in faith right now in this moment to shape us in our faith right now in this moment that we may know your heart. Father, we're desperate to hear from heaven. We're desperate to hear your life. We're desperate to receive your hope. We're desperate, Father, for you to do a new thing in us to cause us to be bold and not be ashamed of who, shame of who you call us to be, but to share your gospel, to do your will. Lord Jesus, we love you. And we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your sacrifice. And Lord, we pray that you would pour in to speak freely, Lord. Have your way in this moment. Have your way in us. That we may please your heart and do your will. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, my brothers and sisters, let's get into this word of the Lord today. Uh, my brother and sister, as I've been spending time with King Jesus, he's been speaking to me concerning his heart, okay? Um, as, a time, as I've been spending time with King Jesus, he's been speaking to me concerning his heart, man. And the Lord Jesus has been saying to me, come closer to me by going deep in my presence. Oh, he said, come closer to me by going deeper in my presence, right? He said, I desire for you to need me like you need water. Oh. He said, a man without water will be a man dehydrated and eventually die. So man need water to live. He says, son, think about a, a great percentage of your body is water. So you need water for the life that is in you, to, the life, for your life to be sustained physically. Oh, He says, son, if I created your body to be sustained physically by earthly water, oh, how much more do your spiritually by your spiritual body need to be sustained by my living water? Oh, and King Jesus said that living water is me. He said, I need you to, to need me, need me like you need water and want me like your favorite meal. Oh, why? Because he said, son, this bread that I give any man eat of me. Watch this. Should never hunger any man drink of me. Shall never thirst, said King Jesus, see the right hand of the Father in heaven. And he said, I died, I gave my life, I gave my sacrifice through the gospel that what I may take you over completely. And he says, son, as I take you over completely by you willingly giving yourself to me, then watch this. You will see the necessity of my life being in you. Oh, he said, you will see the, uh, the necessity of my life being being in you and you'll be desperate to follow me wherever I go because you know I am for certain the hope of life and the hope of glory. Oh. And he said when your heart posture and he said when your heart posture is in that place you can follow me completely because you see nothing better than me. Oh. When your heart posture is completely given over to me you will follow me completely because you see nothing better than me. Uh, my brothers and sisters, when our heart get into a place that there is nothing better than Christ, then we'll give all for Christ. Oh, when we get in a, uh, uh, when we, when our heart get into that place, when our heart get into that, when our heart get into that place that there's nothing better than Christ, then we'll give all for Christ. Oh, and my brothers and sisters, it is important that in this hour, we let the word of God flow through us and convict us that we may be fishers of men to glorify God, right? That we will fish those outside of us to make disciples. But we we'll also allow the Holy Spirit to watch this fish our heart. Mm -hmm. That he may pull us in to, to the shores of heaven. Oh, 
We got to also let the Holy Spirit fish in our heart that he may rail us in, pull us into the shores of heaven that we may rest in God's kingdom. Oh, man. And he said, you have to get to that place that you see nothing better than me. Because he said, son, in this hour of deception that we are in, if you see something better than him, then you will be deceived by the corruption of that false thing. Because in reality, and the truth is, and for ever said in heaven, there's nothing better than God. Right? There's no one greater than the God we than the God we serve. There's no one greater than our God. He is the one and only true God who created the heavens and the earth, the universe, and everything as we see it today. For it is written in the book of Romans, God said, if you just look at my creation, you'll be able to tell that I am who I say I am. And so, my brothers, it's, it's very important in this hour that we see nothing better than Jesus, that we may draw closer to his heart, that he may take us over by his spirit, that we may meet him like we need water that we draw closer to his feet by going deeper into his presence because he chose us with his own blood. Mm. And he said, the foundation of our heart have to be in that place. And I said, King Jesus, my love, my heart, you everything I want and need, King Jesus. I, I, Lord, I don't even, des I desire to be with you in glory. Lord, it even hard for me to even to continue to walk in this earth because I have tasted your goodness, your love, and I want you so bad. And I said, Lord, how do I move forward? How do I proceed? He says, son, you proceed by, watch this, continually to lay your life down for me. Continue to watch this, obey the gospel. Continue to give your life over to me. He says, son, no man will be perfect because man is weakened by the flesh. But the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak. And he says, son, because my spirit is willing, if you choose to follow him, you will, you will consistently follow my will. And he says, son, let your heart posture be in this. Let your heart posture be this. I said, King Jesus, what is it, my love? He says, son, let the, let the mind that is in me be in you. <laughs> he said, let the mind that is in me be in you and let your heart posture be in that foundation. Oh. And he says, son, he said, hear these words very truly, very truly, I tell you, my child. He says, son, any man that believe everything that I just said shall never be put to shame. <laughs> and he said, go tell your brother and sister likewise. I said, Lord, I will. And I'm on assignment on the Lord today to tell you that there's nothing better than Jesus. So to be, so it is our heart posture to be completely given over to Jesus by be, being fully convicted through his presence. And that presence come by the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, okay? And so now as our Lord and Savior King Jesus have spoke to us uh, concerning, uh, uh, concerning, uh, the gospel, now he's going to transition us into this new series. Okay. The first, the, the last series before, the last one was End Time Spiritual Warfare. All right. The last series we finished up with was uh, Emergency, Four Powerful Weeks of God telling us how to respond, how not to respond, how to flee from deception. And uh, uh, in, in the last week of God revealing to us in the last week of the series, consolidating everything together on what we and on how we need to see in the spirit to do his will okay and so my brother so my brothers and sisters watch this is very important okay the lord jesus every week of these series he's building us up for what is about to happen okay? if and I, and I pray that we take serious what the lord is saying in these series because god is speaking from the spirit and revealing things from heaven because when you listen to these messages, he's doing something in our hearts. And soon you're about to be grateful for everything. Well, we should be grateful now, but he's finna, some things that's finna happen in the earth and we're gonna get a clear understanding of everything and why he been saying it to us these weeks. Because each series is creating a heart posture. Each series is creation, is, is each, Hold on one second, brothers and sisters.
Sorry about that, brothers and sisters. Each series, each series is doing something to our heart posture, my brothers and sisters. And so as you listen to what God is saying in these series, he's doing something spiritual in your heart so you will be able to see what is happening, but not only will see what is happening, but to have the endurance for what is about to happen. Because see, we can have the sight, but if we don't have the endurance, we can't finish. <laughs> we can have the sight, but if we don't have the endurance, we can't finish. Watch this. Many people in the Olympics, watch this, they see the race, right? They see the race. They know they have to go to the Olympic Games to compete for the reward, but they train so they can have the endurance to finish. Oh, they know they got to go to the Olympic Games to compete. They know they got to sign up with all the regulation of the uh, race they're doing, but they train hard so they can finish when they get there. Oh, so each week in these series, God is training our heart posture, correcting our heart posture, digging into our heart to bring it to the fruition, to the heart posture he desire, so we can have the endurance to finish every day of our life because we can go to sleep and, and wake up in this and be standing before him tomorrow, but also the things that are about to happen, okay? And the Lord had me to share with you this new series. He said, son, the last two series... It was bridged together with this series that I'm having you to speak now. And the title of this new series is Prepare for the Future. Season one, season one, what you are about to see. Mm -hmm. The title of this series is Prepare for the Future. Season one, what you're about to see. Boy, let me tell you something. Now, it is very important that we have to understand that many people won't share to you, share to you too. Many people won't tell you what is going on and hide for you what is going on. But watch this, my brother and sister. Preparation is important, right? Every morning, some of us got every morning we want, and every morning that you work, what you get up early, you wash your face, you, you put on your clothes, you brush the teeth, you prepare yourself to walk outside. Whenever you're involved in an event or doing something, preparations come first. Right? Because whenever there's no preparation, there's no success in what you're going to do, even with starting your day. If you don't prep your day, then when you go out, you won't be as successful. Right? And so right now in this season, God has to prepare us for the future. Right? And so this is season one or preparing for the future. Right. There's going to be different seasons in this series, <laughs> but this is the first season of uh, pre preparation for the future. And this first installment, first message of the series is what you are about to see. My brother and sister, I'm going to get ready to transition into these articles and show you what you're about to see. Right. And so right now we see in America, there's this big thing about climate change right or the green new deal or the environment excuse me and the things that are happening in the earth okay hold on give me one second let me get i had a let me go back to what i had up i'm sorry uh there's a big thing uh things that are about to happen in the earth that you need to be aware of right and the lord have unloaded so much on me man and um it's very important and so you have to understand Revelation 13, and I, and then I want y'all to write these scriptures down. Revelation 13, right? It's very important that you understand what you are about to see and what is about to happen. So right now we're fit to talk about what you're about to see currently in the earth. Okay? What you're about to see currently. And so let me begin to share my screen. Give me one second, my brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, somebody has to come back in. We're about to see. About to see which uh give me one second i'm sorry let me uh okay so, 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 so. Let me see. somebody gotta mute something okay and so what we're about to see let me get to the articles okay here we go i'm about to begin to share my screen okay and so um my brother and sister, right now, the Lord wanted me to address a few things, right? And I'm going to start at Revelation 13, verse 1. It's very important, my brothers and sisters. It's very important that you understand what you're about to see and what is about to happen. This week, all week, 
the global leaders have their meeting annually, the global leaders, president, prime ministers, ambassadors, uh, whatever high up people you want to call it, they meet at the United Nations in New York City and they have this debate about the world and what they're doing and the things that they would like to tackle. They come together every year and they get up there and say speeches on what they are about to do or what they're about to accomplish. And so now we're going to go to Revelation 13. It says, Revelation 13, verse 1, it says, write these scripture down because you're going to need to know these things. Revelation 13, it said, then I saw a beast rising out of the sea. It had seven heads, 10 horns with 10 crowns on his horn, with 10, uh, seven heads and 10 horns, with 10 crowns on his horns. And written on each, written on each head were names that blaspheme God. Now, now watch this, my brothers and sisters, watch this. So right now, what you is about to see is global leaders. You're about to see global leaders come on the scene, watch this, and eventually it will be 10 nations rise up, okay? It will be 10 nations rise up, and these is going to be a group of countries. Did you catch this? Because this is where we had it. Soon, uh, catastrophic things that's going to take place in the earth, in the environment, watch this, but also uh, wars between countries, which is World War III, right? And after the, in, in the midst of these things happen, you're going to see 10 kings 10 nation rise up. They're going to be a group of nations that will be completely ran by the Antichrist, right? So these 10 nations is going to come up, but these 10 nations is going to, uh, they're going to form an alliance. They're going to be a group of countries that the world look to. And as the world began to look to these group of countries, they're going to give themselves over to the Antichrist. These 10 groups of country is going to pave the way for the Antichrist, right? And I'm telling you this, because we're finna see these things happen, right? Right? And what the, what they're and, and 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 they're gonna do this through global infrastructures. Mm -mm -mm. I want you to hear. Take notes. They're gonna do this. Make sure nobody's trying to get in. They're gonna do this through global infrastructure. Right? They're gonna do it between global infrastructure. Now let, let, let so let give us a definition of what infrastructure means. I can give you a, a definition of infrastructure. Okay, let's read it. It said the infrastructure, the basic, the basic physical and organizational structures and facilities, buildings, roads, power supplies needed for the operation of society and enterprise. Oh, society of a uh, society or inter enterprise. So let me slow it down and say it again. Infrastructure means the basic physical and organizational structures and facilities, building roads, powers, power supplies needed for the operation of a society or enterprise. And so right now, these 10 group of nations is going to rise up with authority, right, this, to build a one world society, watch this, through global infrastructures to do what? Tie the economies, tie the buildings, tie the cities, everything together through technology. Mm -hmm. And when they do these things, the next thing they will do is, watch this, tie humans into it all together. And what they're going to do is begin to, watch this, move to make man exalt himself, to worship himself, and so they're going to be about, watch this, investing in man to enslave man. Right? They quote down. You're going to need it. This is from the Holy Spirit. They're going to invest in man to enslave man. Let me say that one more time because some people is going to hear it and be like, wow, because it's good to invest in people, but they're going to have an ulterior motive in what they are doing. So let me give you an example. Let me give you an example of what it looked like. A woman is on the street. A woman is on the street. She down, she down bad. She's going through tough time and she needs some help to pay her rent. A man ride up to her with great money, great wealth, ride up to her and see her in her struggle, see her in her pain. But she, but uh he is a wolf. He is he is a wolf inside of his heart, but he have an appearance that he is good. He rolls up on the woman and says, Hey, I see you struggling, I see you going through. How you doing? She's like, man, I'm hurting, I'm bad. I really need to take care of my family. 
I really need to take care of my children. The man abandoned me, he left time, and I only got myself and my children, and I'm trying to make ends meet. He say, I can help you. I can provide for you. Let me help you in your struggle. Mm. So the woman began to open her heart because she have a need. She began to open her heart because she has a need and invite the man into her heart. And as she invite the man into her heart, then he said that, hey, in order for me, uh, and then he said, listen, I have helped you a great amount. I have helped you a good bit. Should, shouldn't it be well as if you helped me? He said, now that I have helped you, I have poured so much into you, help you got the house, help you got the job, help you got on your feet, take care of your children, watch this, it only right that you help me and you serve me. Now, see, the woman is a woman that was not trying to give herself away, was not trying to, watch this, be involved with this man this way because she was not even attracted to the man or uh, wanted the man this way. She just thought that he was a person that was going to help. But because he have invested so much in her, she feel a need to give in to his desire. So now she in a position where she is, watch this, serving him to receive from him. Mm -mm -mm. Serving him the wrong way, doing immoral favors to get something that she need from him because she feel as if there's no other way to get. It. Oh, right. And we know that in a sense of prostitution or any other type of way or coercion to get that person to do what they want and they struggle. And so this is what they are about to do to human beings. Did you catch that analogy? This is what they are about to do to human beings. What they're going to say after this global catastrophic crisis, they're going to say, man, we're going to invest in you, but they're going to invest in you to enslave you. God. Remember what Jesus told us that we have to have in our heart. When he started speaking to us at the beginning of this, we have to know in our heart that there is nothing better than Jesus. God. So in this world transitioning to its digital place, and they roll out all of these solutions or roll out all these things that are attracted to your flesh. Watch this. We won't be consumed and say in our heart that they're better than Jesus, that they may coerce us to do what they want. But rather, we'll see that there's nothing better than Jesus, so we'll give away everything that'll keep us from what he wants. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's very important, my brothers and sisters. I pray that you're listening. Because, man, what is the title of this series? This is to prepare you for the future. This is what you're about to see currently. This is where the world is transitioning in the spiritual realm. King Jesus be speaking to me about things in the spiritual realm. This is what is happening in the spiritual realm between, watch this, in the spiritual realm, there's light and darkness happening. That's why the series Entire Spiritual Warfare was important. Because in the spiritual realm right now, this is the what they are, these evil spirits are doing in the spiritual realm. But in the national realm, watch this, they're about to enslave man through investing in man. And on the surface, it's good to invest in people. Who don't want to invest in, in a person to see them to grow better? But that's only when it is a pure place. Watch this. God seen man had a need. God seen man was dead in his sin. So God invested in man by what? Giving them his own life. But God did not have a impure motive. God had a pure motive. But why? Because he desired for man to live. So he gave man his own life. Give me one second, my brother and sister. Give me one second. And so my brothers and sisters, excuse me, I had my little ones. <laughs> and so my brothers and sisters, uh, what the Lord is doing right now, so what they're going to, so the Lord is trying to keep us from being enslaved. And so as this word transition and go to that place, we have to see that we need Jesus, that there's nothing better than our God and let Jesus take a note, take us over and not man take us over. Okay. This is what is going to happen in the future of mankind. Okay. 
Okay. And so these 10 king, these what's going to happen in regard to these 10 king is going to be a group of nations. Okay. And they're going to do this by global infrastructure. Now, we said that infrastructure about physical operation in society. But we know wherever there is, I want you to catch this. I want you to understand this because they're going to be saying all these terms to you and they're going to make it sound so juicy, but you got to understand what they're saying. Okay? Now, we know that whenever there is a society, there's a people. Whenever there is a society, there is a people, right? And so Global infrastructure, they're not just going to be saying it from the place of the physical place of just buildings, but they're going to look at people as infrastructure as well. Why would they? Because they're trying to merge human bodies with technology. So they're looking at humans as infrastructures as well. Amen. Right? They're looking at humans as infrastructures as well. That what? That they may organize humans according to the structure of globalism that they may organize humans according to the structure of globalism. But us who are in Christ are not organized according to the structure of globalism, but we're organized according to the structure of heaven. Oh, repeat that. We're not organized according to the structure of globalism. We're organized according to the structure of heaven. And that structure is the life of Christ Jesus, his, his, his gospel, right, that build us by his spirit. Oh. And if we're built by a spirit, we're built by the society of heaven and not this world, okay? It said, and, and the infrastructure said, needed for the operation of society or enterprise, right? So let's look up what enterprise mean, right? Now watch this now. The Holy Spirit for the brain enterprise. Watch this now. Watch it carefully. A project or undertaking, typically one that is difficult and requires effort. Oh, they say the enterprises, watch this, a project or undertaking, typically one that is difficult or requires effort. Pause. So we talked about the society of people and how they look at people as infrastructure. And then they say, or enterprise, meaning that it's a project that they look at us as a project, okay, that typically that is difficult requires effort. So pause. They know that it's difficult to get man to watch this to pledge allegiance to globalism. They know that it's difficult, watch this, to get man to follow world order. And because it's difficult, they say, watch this, it's gonna require a great amount of effort to get it done. Oh. And so in their heart, they said, watch this, we're gonna cause great catastrophic crisis because in a difficult, watch this, because it, out of the ordinary, people is going to be difficult to deal with to get them to do what we want. So watch this. We're going to create crisis and cause crisis and use national disaster and use these things that are happening. Watch this. To get their heart to soften, to obey our will. Watch this. So it will be effortless. They know enterprise is going to come with great effort. So in order to make it effortless, we need them to be given over to fear. And so they're using fear to bring the world into globalism. That's why Jesus said many times in the Bible, fear not, I am with you. You're going to see when we get to the articles. And watch this. And, and the Lord Jesus said this to me. Okay, uh, uh, you, when we get to the articles, you're going to see why, my brother and sister. Give me one second, okay? And so God, God is showing us, watch this, how the, the enterprise, how it requires effort. So watch this, they know that they're going to have to bring fear to make people give in. Now, listen to this quote. Listen to this quote from a globe, somebody that believes in globalism today. And I think I wrote it down, what this woman said. Um, give me one second. What did she say? I think I wrote it down. Give me, I got a list here. I'm sorry. Give me one second. Okay. Okay. Here we go. This lady said, uh, this lady said, uh, globalism, she said, because of what happened with COVID-19, because of what I hold with, because of COVID-19, this have given the, this, this have, because of COVID-19, this have showed the world that they need to come together. 
She said, because of COVID-19, she said, this have given the, the world a sign that we need to do this together. Watch what she said. Watch me. Now watch this. Watch it. Watch what she said. Watch this. And she said, COVID-19 was the immediate shock for globalism. <laughs> watch this. She said, I'm telling you, this is what she said. At, a, at the World Government Summit, she said that COVID-19 was the immediate shock for globalism. Pause, right? Whenever someone goes in shock, that means they just have experienced some trauma that they have not experienced before. Okay? Whenever someone go in shock, that means they have been afflicted with something out of the ordinary that they would, was not uh, uh, a used to experience, and they have caused a, 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 a unfamiliar pain or a unfamiliar situation that is causing them to be in a place of, or like just stuck, just completely overwhelmed, like, like in that moment, just shaken by what they just seen, right? Definition for shock. A sudden upsetting or surprising event or experience. Oh, so she said COVID-19 was the experience, the sudden, a, a surprising event or experience to bring the world into globalism because it shows that we need to do this together. Uh, and so why is this important? Because watch this, they watch this. This is the preparation of what we're about to see in the future, my brothers and sisters. And they're going to do this through what? Global infrastructure and through technology. Now let me share my screen, man. This is this is some heavy stuff, man. And so let me uh, let me show y'all what is the Lord preparing us for uh, what is about to happen in the future. So give me one second. Let me slide this thing up, my brothers, and let me share my screen. So let's go to some of these articles. Okay, I'll show you some of these articles. One second. Show you what this general. Show you what this general said. Uh, Give me one second. Show you what this general said in a, in a, um, in America, and I just want to show you. Retired general, U.S. will attack the Russian military if it, if Putin nukes Ukraine. Okay, a former army commander said because uh, Russia threatened them, threatened the West with nuclear warfare because uh, America. I mean, Russia is having a bad time in Ukraine, so uh, Russia is threatening to use nuclear weapon. He said, "I'm not bluffing." Right. Because American and a whole lot of other leaders sitting sending so much heavy ammunition over there, and and he and it and, and it's tough for him when it should have been easy. So watch this. And and what I mean by should have been even easy, not saying that Ukraine could not uh, do something, um, do something on their own. But what I'm saying is America giving them so many sophisticated weapons that it making and American other leaders making making it a a whole lot harder for Russia to do what they want. And so watch this. A former army commander said, according to Daily Mail, that the U.S. would deliver a devastating strike against Russian military if country President Vladimir Putin attacked Ukraine with Nicola Burke. Do you see what is going on? Where the world is headed? And see, the, why is the Lord telling Because it's preparing us for the future that we're about to walk into. My brother and sister, you're reliable. Watch it. You, it, it, you're reliable to one day wake up one morning and the world being nuclear chaos. I'm gonna be, this, this, this series is gonna be real heavy and real real and straight to the point, okay? You're, you're, you're likely to wake up one morning to walk outside and nuclear warfare don't happen and millions and billions of people, third of the world, gone. And when this hack, this is written in the Bible, the Bible said what happened, so it's gonna come to, happen, ha come to pass. When God told us about World War III, he was not telling us something that he guessed what happened. He's telling us something that he have already seen happen. And I share this a lot. Whenever the, the prophets of the Bible is not telling us something that God have not seen happen, it's telling us something that God have already seen happen. So in God's eyes, he have already seen World War III happen. He have already seen the fruition of it. So he just giving us an inside scoop of what he's already seen that we have not seen yet. And so the, it, this is what you're going to see in the future, right? You're gonna, you're gonna, you're reliable to see. You wake up one morning, you come outside, or people be at the grocery stores, and some people, some watch this. Some people are gonna be in schools. Some children are gonna be in schools. 
Some people are going to be just waking up, uh, walking outside, and it's going to be all over the intercoms. It's going to be all over the news of World War Three just happened. You're going to see, you're going to hear, you're going to hear leaders saying that we're going into DEFCON three. That's what you're going to hear leaders say. You're going to hear them say we're going to DEFCON three. You're going to hear World War Three. You're going to hear all of these things coming out, and you and the world is going to be in nuclear chaos. And so. The Lord is preparing us because you can see the rhetoric in their heart. You're like, man, what? Why is man heart getting so wicked when they throwing this nuclear word around so frivolously? Now, now I've been walking with the Lord for a little bit of time. Well, not for a little bit of time, walking with it for a while. But what I'm saying is, is in my is in the longest time I believe, I never seen people play around with the word nuclear as they've been playing around with it recently. Right. We talked about a while ago, even an article in Los Angeles Times said a 30 man count will be wiped out. Confirming what the Bible said. And so what the Lord is saying to prepare for the future, right? You need to, to get it in your heart and your mind that this is where we're headed. Now, some false leader will lie to you and said that the world is going to get better. No, it's not. It's going to get worse. We see even last week, we talked about them trying to pass a purge law. And so the word, right, watch this, brother and sister. The world is not going to get better. So we're going to take that lie off the table. We're going to take that misconception off the table where people are going to tell you that it, the world is going to get better. No, that's unbiblical. The Bible don't tell us that the world will get better. The Bible tells us that the world is going to get more evil as we approach the, let me see if anybody's trying to get, as we approach the day of Christ. And so you, you're about to see the world get increasingly wicked and increasingly evil. But you're going to see the remnant of God getting stronger, getting stronger, and they're going to get more radical and get more brighter to testify about Jesus because they're seeing what he said happen. And so let's keep reading this article. Lieutenant General Ben Hodges qualified while a response from the U.S. may not be nuclear, but may not be nuclear. If Putin were to use such weapon against Ukraine, U.S. could destroy the Black Sea Fleet or destroy Russian bases in Crimea. Do you see that? Do you see that? So they're saying they would directly attack Russia. So they're saying if Russia now, I'm just showing you how this play out now. You see how they say, hey, if Russia do this, we're going to attack Russia directly. Their, their base is in Crimea. If Russia would not, not launch nuclear weapons against Ukraine, right? If, if you attack them directly, you, don't, you wouldn't think that they would not use nuclear weapons against you. And in response, if they launch nuclear weapons against you, you don't think they would, America won't launch nuclear weapons back against them. And so I'm just showing you how the rhetoric are in their heart, but God have told us these four angels have been released from the great U.S. faith world, but it's going to point back to the Middle East, where they came from, these spirits came from. And so the Lord wants you to be in preparation for what is about to happen. Okay, so this one thing, right, and now we talked about this a lot, but the Lord want to break this down in where we're headed, my brother and sister, so let me uh, keep moving forward. I just want to show you what these people are talking about. How did come, come at the Russian leader sent shockwaves around the world after he won Wednesday this week in a speech, and it was on Fox News, that he was not bluffing about using nuclear weapons. See, that's what he said. He was not bluffing about using nuclear weapons. In his speech, Putin said that the representatives of the lead in NATO have made statements about the possibility and admissibly of using nuclear weapons, using weapons of mass destruction against Russia. To those who allow themselves to make such statements about Russia, Putin added, I would like to remind them you that remind you that our country also has various means of destruction, and for some components more modern than those of the NATO countries. And if the territorial integrity of our country is threatened, we will certainly use all the means at our disposal to protect Russia and our people. And it's not a bluff. This is what this man said on Wednesday. See? And so you got to understand where you, because Revelation 9 tells us, you have to understand that this is the type of environment that you're going to be in so, somewhere. If you are alive and remain, I'm telling you something, brothers and sisters, this is the type of environment that you're heading to. But a lot of these wicked global leaders that worship Satan, a lot of these people want catastrophic things to happen like this because they're going to transition the world into a, into a digital future and globalism. It's very important. So you can get your mind ready, your heart ready for the environment that you and your kids going about that that you and your kids are about to enter, because the world is going to be fearful, and some of our children is going to be afraid. But we got to be a people that is level-headed, 
level-headed, let them level-headed, because we're consumed by the spirit. And we're not fearing because we know Jesus is with us, that we can pour into them the gospel, that we can pour into them. Don't be afraid that Jesus is with them because this world is going to be shaken with fear. King Jesus have already revealed to, this to me. He have took me in the spirit. It showed me these things. I'm, I'm telling you straight up, brothers, they ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit and what Jesus is directly telling me. I'm telling you, King Jesus came directly and told me specifically, he said, son, y'all are about to enter my thousand year reign. Jesus came to me directly and spoke to me. He said, y'all are about to enter the thousand year reign where I will make the church my government. We are indeed in that seven year period leading up to his second coming and the thousand year reign of Christ is about to come soon. But watch this. Things have to happen to bring the world to that place. And watch this. Because man heart reject God is so wicked, they're going to do evil things. Watch this. They lead to chaos through the, uh, through, in chaos because of their own wisdom through pride. That's going to that's going to lead and Jesus is going to come to judge the world because of their own wickedness. Right. And so in this hour, Jesus, watch this, our Lord is giving man over into his own desires. Watch this. Not that God desiring for him, because watch this, you gotta, you gotta watch this, the spirit of the Antichrist is gonna be, begin to try to lie, to try to turn people against God. But you gotta know the truth. Watch this. The Romans once said God gave them over into their desire because they turned the truth about God into a lie. So let's kill this lie because soon after these catastrophic things happen, the spirit of the Antichrist is gonna be lying to people. The Antichrist is going to be lying to people. He's going to tell people, let us not look to God. He's going to say, let us not look beyond ourselves, but let us look to man. Right? He's going to try to make people believe that there is no heaven because heaven, watch this, watch this. They're going to, he's going to say that heaven is on the earth. Watch this. He's going to try to twist what Jesus said. Jesus said, our father, right? why in heaven? Your kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Antichrist is going to say, he's going to try to, he's going to twist it to say that uh, heaven is in, heaven is the earth. That's why he's preparing man's heart to worship creation through climate change. I want you to take these notes down, what the Holy Spirit is saying. That's why, that's why Satan is trying to make man worship climate change. That's why you hear the Pope saying that, watch this, we need to take care of Mother Nature and worship climate change. Why? Because whoever is the Pope at the time of the false prophet, at the time of the false prophet, whoever is the Pope at the time of the Antichrist when he come on the scene, will be the uh, false prophet. So they, the Satan that got them pushing climate change and worshiping the Green New Deal and stuff like that, because Satan is why he's trying to make man worship the earth. Why? Why is that important? Because why? He is, he is going to lie through the Antichrist uh, lie through the Antichrist to try to make man to try to make try to, to try to blame to try to blame God for what has happened. Mm, 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 mm. That's why the Book of Revelation is said that they still did not repent of their sins, but they blame God. Watch this. The Book of Revelation said that 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 they, 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 they did not repent of their sins, but instead they blame God. Well, why would they? Because Satan is lying. Is going to try to twist it out of this chaos. To make it seem like they try to make it blame God, but in reality, it was the own wickedness of man heart. Okay, it's very important what you're about to see. What is happening, my brothers and sisters? What is happening? Because that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna try to make heaven earth, and that is what you're seeing. They're doing with technology, and this is the environment you're about to enter. Watch what happened going out 2022. And not twenty. If you heard what we talked about last week on Inside Evangelism, it was good. It was heavy, right? And so God's preparing you for your future because this is what they're going to try to do. Okay, it's very important, my brothers and sisters, because this is what this is what they're going to do. They're going to try to make heaven earth, but we know heaven is going to be in the kingdom of God, right? Heaven, we're going. We watch this. Heaven is the kingdom of God. We get a taste of heaven where Jesus is living in us because He is the eternal presence of heaven. <laughs> but let us not be deceived when these men wicked try to make earth heaven creating their own utopia it's very important my brothers and sisters but this is the environment that you're about to go into when this war break out world war three you're gonna see people try to blame and blame it and do out and blame try to blame god and do all these things and you're gonna have false leaders watch this sat to try to give in to this 
but try to twist it in a corrupt way instead of setting people to free by telling them, no, it was because man sinned, because man rejected God, the reason why they was given over to their own desire. In the book of Romans 1, it said God gave them over to a reprobate mind that they did, did that they did, watch this, things that were unnatural, meaning that God did not intend for them to live that way. God did not desire for them to live that way. But because they, in their free will, chose to do what they want, he said, okay, I, I'm not going to force you because I don't want you to choose my way. So I'm not going to force you. So I'm going to give you over to you what you want. And so that's why this world is going to be so wicked in this hour during the great tribulation, because they love darkness. This is God said, come to the light, come to the light, come to the light. But they saying, I want darkness. And we all know that God gave us free will, right? We have to, Jesus, God said, to, before y'all put before you life and death, choose who you're going to serve, right? And so watch this, because they're choosing death, I said, God, so I'm going to give you over to what you want. And that's why the world is going to get so wicked, because it ain't that God desired for it to happen. It's because they choosing for themselves what they want. That's why the Bible said this, this our God is going to send a strong delusion. Watch this. Strong delusion that they will believe what's not as true. Well, what was God saying? What was he saying? That he said, I'm going to send a strong delusion. And it's going to prove the lie that they believe in their heart. <laughs> it's going to prove, prove that they love darkness instead of light because they won't come to the truth. He said, I'm going to send a strong delusion. So God is going to watch this, send this strong delusion, a lot of strong delusion. It is going to prove that they live based upon lies instead of the truth. Because they love the truth, they will not be deceived by the lie. Right? That truth is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Let me give you an example. Saul, uh, Saul was tormented by a lion spirit. Right? Saul was tormented by a lion spirit. God sent that delusion, allowed that delusion. Watch this. God did not watch this desire it, but watch this. God allowed it to prove the rebellion of Saul. Heart. God allowed it to prove the rebellion and, and, and the rebellion of Saul. Heart. Let me give you an example. Satan came up in the book of Job. God said, hey, um, have you considered my servant Job? Uh, he said, Satan said, listen, you just got a covering over him because you got a covering over him. That's why he's so faithful. Move the covering over him. I bet he blasphemed. I bet he stopped following. I bet, I bet he'll do all his thing with it. So God removed the covering. Watch this. And watch this. Satan tested him to watch to see if he was faithful to God. Watch this. To see if he was true to God. Watch this. To see if he loved light instead of darkness. And so in this hour, when God sent this strong delusion, a lot of strong delusion, watch this, it's going to prove who really loves light and who really loves darkness. Mm -mm -mm. And that don't just go for the world. Watch this. They go for the church too. Because in the book of Ezekiel, God said, uh, it was a writer with the ink horn, go through the city, smite everybody, but begin at my house first. So this delusion that's going to hit the earth, watch this, it's going to come against the church. Watch this. It's going to prove if we really of Jesus or, or we are not. Not that God desire for us to fall, but God, watch this, is actually bragging on us in the face of the enemy. He said, watch this, I'm going to send this delusion in the earth and say, and watch this. I bet those who are mine, they're going to stand firm. Those who are not, watch this, God, it's going to prove. But watch this. God is bragging on his remnant in this hour. He said, go, I said, I'm, I'm going to send this strong loot. Watch this. Okay, say, I'm going to allow this to happen. Watch this. But my remnant, they're going to stay strong. My remnant, they're going to grow even larger in numbers. You know, my remnant, they're going to walk in the power of the spirit. My remnant, miracle is going to happen. Miracle, the dead will come alive. Watch this. Limbs will grow back. The sick will be raised. They will be, they watch, fed manna from heaven. Watch this. By my hand. So the strong delusion, watch this, is not going to affect the remnant, but it's going to call the remnants to be the greatest they ever have been. But those who are really not the remnant, watch this, will be given over to corrupt legislation and desire because they really did not know, love the light of heaven. Then that light is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And so the Lord is preparing us for the future. Make somebody trying to get in. Preparing us for the future because this is where we're about to head, my brothers and sisters. Okay? The Holy Spirit is going to set some heavy stuff in this series. Well, he, he's not, he's not going to play around with it at all. He's not going to play around with it at all. And so, um, why is it? Okay, I can say, well, I can't see nothing. Okay. And so, let's keep moving forward with these articles, my brother and sister. Look what the leader of America, look what the, the leader of America is saying. Uh, 
Mm, I'm sorry, bro. So I hope my computer is not freezing up. Uh, so I want you to watch what the leader of America is saying. Give me one second. Uh, I hope it's not freezing up. It might be freezing up on me. So let me do this. Give me one. I'm sorry about that, brother. So let me try to reopen it. So watch what the leader of uh, the leader of okay. Give me one second. Hmm. Give me one second. I don't know what is happening right now. Hmm. Can you guys see my can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, okay, cool. Okay. And so let me let me go to what Joe Biden. Say what Joe Biden. Did, um, it just look like you need to um zoom in because it's saying it's stretched out where we can't see everything. You say it's small? It's big. Well, all we see is reach and C H U R. Oh, seriously? Okay, now better now. Okay, okay, gosh. All right. Thank, thank you, sis. Um mm -hmm. Now watch this, said Biden calls for more inclusive United Nations in his annual address. This happened in all this week. Uh, these people are speaking at the United Nations. See, the reason why I want you to see United Nations, uh, because these are the, these 10 kings is gonna rise up in the United Nations. They're gonna be a group of nations that the world give authority to, and they in return is gonna give it over to the Antichrist the one man, because they're going to look at him as the only hope to save the world. They're going to look at him as a great peacemaker. And they're going to say, listen, this is an environment that you're about to walk through. This is the environment that you're about to walk into. Seriously, brothers, so this is the environment that is being set up right now that you're finna walk into. And so the King Jesus is a few years away and you have to watch what is happening, right? <laughs> but as somebody, I'll tell you somebody stop popping up. I, 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 I rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus. But uh, give me one second, my brothers and sisters. Uh, let me try to go back uh, and redo this article because I really want you to see, I really want you to see what um, Biden calls for more inclusive United Nation in annual address. Okay, hopefully. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here you go. So now you can see Biden speaking. He actually spoke at the United Nations. And the, the, the United Nations is the seat of one world government. It will be the seat of the Antichrist and these 10 kings. And so now you see Joe Biden speaking at this. You see him walking, you see him speak. We're not gonna listen to the whole message, but I want but you can see he speaks. So you can't, so people won't lie to you and say that it's a conspiracy theory and none of that. This man actually spoke at this place. And this is the live speech, but it's 29 minutes. We're not gonna watch it. Okay, President Joe Biden called for changes to the United Nations for a more inclusive structure, for a more inclusive structure at an annual speech before the United General Assembly in New York on Wednesday. Biden championed expanding the number of permanent and non-permanent seats on the security accounts to bring a representative from countries in Africa and Latin America before an audience of leaders from nearly 200 countries in an effort to bring more voices to the table of the United Nations. So that means Biden is for globalism. That means Biden is for one world government. Now, you might say, brother, what, what is it? Well, what, what it got to do with our president? Because the Antichrist is going to take over the United Nations and one world government. So if our president is for one world government, that means he will be for, for the agenda of the Antichrist. Oh, let's keep moving forward. To bring more voices to the table. So that's what I'm saying to you. Let us not be pro-party, but pro-Bible, right? This is not about, oh, what you think? Oh, uh, Raph is just about pro No, no, no. This is about being pro vital. What I'm reading to you is Revelation 13. It said, then I saw a beast rise out of the sea. It had seven heads and 10 horns with 10 crowns on it down then. It was written and written on each were heads of the name that blasphemed God. The beast looked like a leopard. A leopard represents uh, uh, Germany, but it had feet like a bear, represents Russia. And a mouth of the lion, that, that means Great Britain. And the dragon gave the beast his own power and throne and greater thirds. Who is the dragon? Revelation 12 said the dragon is Satan. So Satan gave this one one the government the authority. So the Bible is telling us that Satan gave the United Nations his authority. Satan gave the United Nations his seat. And Satan is about to uh, uh, give the, the United Nations its teeth to try to enforce corrupt agendas through the Great Tribulation. Okay? And... um. And we know that the Bible said that the Antichrist will persecute the saint, meaning that the United Nations will be against true believers. And so 
I'm reading to you Revelation 13 so you to know why it's important that we don't side with the United Nations, their agenda, because they will be the beast of the Antichrist, the one world government, the seat of the Antichrist with these 10 kings. And we see Biden is trying to expand it. And so I'm reading to you off the page of the Bible. And so that's why for it's our for us to read the Bible so we can know what's going on. He titled, he touted, meaning he bragged the U.S. recent effort to address climate change. What we just say about climate change, right? What you say about climate change, about worshiping creation, that they, they're trying to make heaven, they're trying to make heaven, earth, make earth heaven, and they're trying to do it through climate change by saying if we uh if we take care of the planet, then the whole world can live forever. Because if we don't take care of the planet, they're saying that the world is going to be beyond re beyond repair. But if we take care of the planet, what they're saying is the planet will live long, meaning that we will have that they're saying that the planet pretty much that it will be watch this, it will live, watch this, it will live. They're trying to get humans to live forever through technologies. And so they're doing it through climate change to build a utopia of eternity in the earth when there's no such thing because only eternity is in heaven with God. So man is trying to be God and create his own eternity. God, man, man is trying to be God and create his own eternity. That is what the legislation of climate change is about in the spiritual realm. Demons are using climate change to create his own utopia of eternity in the earth by exalting man to worship himself. God. And Satan, you know, if he get man to worship himself, he'll get man to worship him by taking the mark. Say, that is his plan. That is his MO. Right. And so when you see what is happening right now, the Lord is telling you this. King Jesus, see the right hand of the father in heaven, because this is an environment we're about to go into. Biden, Biden, so, so let's keep reading. It said Latin America before an audience of leaders from nearly 200 comfort and countries in an effort to bring voices, more voices to the table at the United Nations. He titled the U.S. recent effort to address climate change and the global food crisis driven by the war, driven by the war in Ukraine high inflation rates and supply chains, right? Attributed in part to an unprovoked and illegal encourage of security account current member in neighboring territory. Calling for an international body to coalesce around shared principle of rules, law, and non-proliferation. -pro Biden said the time has come for the UN to become more inclusive. So what he's saying, he called the UN to be, to expand. US ambassador to the UN, Linda Thomas Greenfield proposed, proposed on reforming the UN security council laid out reforms to UN Security Council early in September, including a resolution requiring the five permanent members of the UN Security Council, US, Russia, China, United Kingdom, and France, to justify their use of veto privilege. So what are they saying? They're trying to give the teeth over to the United Nations. See, right now, the five per permanent members, the, 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 if you don't know what the five permanent members of the United Nations is, these were the five, if you've been in the army, these are the five, these are the five victim nations that are, are from, that are that arisen after World War II. These are the five victim nations. And these five victim nations came out of World War II, was given authority, uh, was given a power of authority through veto to deny resolution that they don't agree with. And so right now they're saying that the United the UN Security Council need to expand, but these countries need to now justify their right for using veto, meaning that they would not only that they would not just have a veto, they would that why well, they would have a veto, but you would have to justify the reason why you're using it. So in reality, you would not have a veto because why well, says if the United Nations said that's not a problem or cause, then you can't veto. See, right now. They can veto it whether they have whether they see it as a problem cause or not. What they're saying is that there need to be something in legislation that allows the UN to say if your uh, uh, veto is justifiable or not. And what it does is it robs you of your complete authority of veto because if they don't agree with what you're saying, then they can deny your veto and pass what they want. And so this is what the, the world is transitioning to, to give the United Nations their teeth to do what they want. Okay? The Security Council should be, should also be better, if, Security Council should also uh, better reflect the current global realities and incorporate more ge geographical, geographically diverse perspectives, she said. The United States should refrain from use of the veto by reiterating in his address. Look at that. So why would a the president of America of I mean, free countries is willing is fighting for a veto to lose its power? Mm -hmm. Why would a leader over a sovereign nation be willing to give over his veto power 
and actually bring his country into the enslavement of the United Nations, that if the United Nations pass a revolution, that means America no longer can deny it. That means America no longer can deny the revolution, but accept it as fact as international law. Why is it important? Because the whole world is going to, in 2023, they're going to move forward. The whole world is going to go into a system of international, international law as we move out 2023 and move on to the second coming of Christ Jesus. The world is going to go into international court. We have courts and cities and states and stuff like that, but they're going to transition everything digital where everything will be under the auspice of the international global court system, right? Where if the United Nations pass a revolution, then it's the law over the whole country, even down to the very civil court in your city that you stay in. Say it. But this is what they want to do in America. But it's hard for them to do that in America because America got a constitution. That's why I love God. Because he got a remnant in America. 40% of America is going to reject the mark of the beast. 60% will follow it. 40% of America, that's a lot of people. America is 300 million strong. So 40%, that is a lot of people that's going to be pushing against the Antichrist, which is a good thing. And so a lot of portion of America are not going to allow this, but some of America are going to be for it. But other countries won't have the luxury that we got because they don't have a constitution, right? And so that's why uh, the Biden administration is attacking the constitution because they want to give the United Nations their, their rights to the veto to make America buy by the resolution of the United Nations. How do we know that? Because the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, Joe, Joe Biden decided that he wanted to try to go to the United Nations to push a revolution, a resolution for uh, uh, abortion at the United Nations, an international resolution. So if it passed there, it make America have to buy it by it, even though America uh, abandoned it in the Supreme Court. That's crazy. Okay? And so these are the things that is going on. And the leader of America is the one pushing to get a, to, 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 for the veto. The, the veto to be lessened. That's sad. Okay? I'm just showing you uh, these are the things that are happening, my brothers and sisters. These are the things. Why? Because the, this this is uh, make sure, okay, this are the future. This, these are the future. Uh, these are the future. I don't know why I keep saying my screen sharing is paused. Okay, you guys still can see my screen, right? It keeps saying your screen sharing is paused. Yes, we can still okay. see it. Yeah, I don't know why I'm saying it. Okay. Okay, and so my brothers and sisters, this is uh, what you're seeing. Okay, what you're seeing right now is that the Lord wants us to pray for the future. Move, watch this, moving out 2022, moving out 2023. Brothers and sisters, this are the future you're walking in. And I pray that you take it seriously because God is about to come to you. He's about to come to speak to some of y'all like he spoke to Samuel. He came to the foot of Samuel's bed. Samuel have not encountered God. God kept calling Samuel. But Samuel will run to Eli. He said, Samuel, but he runs to Eli. Samuel runs to Eli. But Sam, Eli said, you know what? God is talking to you. Go, to, go this time and say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Eli, uh, Eli, uh, Samuel was in the house of God, but he had not encountered God's voice for himself. So he did not know when God was calling him. So that's why he ran to Eli. God right now this see is going to be coming to a lot of y'all, speaking to y'all directly on what he got calling y'all to do and the spirit is going to order into your ears his he's going to order into your ears so you can watch this say speak lord your servant is listening in this season in uh in this season this uh, this my, uh okay in this season in this season god in this season god about to speak to some speak to a lot of us and you got to be ready to respond to what he about to tell you to do and it's going to be a blessing for your household and I'm not talking about physical stuff. It's going to be for your soul to call you to endure. It's going to be spiritual work, but also it's going to be physical thing he's going to tell you to do, how to move, how to operate, because in this hour, we're going to operate by a different system. And so he's going to be coming to a lot of you, speaking to you directly, but you got to be really to respond because he's preparing you because this is the future you're about to walk into. And once you begin to transition, you're going to see the world. You can be like, why everybody else? You're going to say to yourself, some of y'all going to be stretching your head. How can they, they How can they see this? The whole world is going to be deceived. How do we know that? The book of Revelation said, those names that are not written in the Lamb Book of Life shall be wandered after the beast of one world government. You're going to see the world completely blind to what Satan is doing. They're going to be looking and be like, 
man, they're going to be, you're going to see like, why are people drifting towards this corruption? And why? you like, man, this is crazy. But it's going to be because you feel the spirit. It's going to be because you gave your life to Jesus. It's going to be because you truly follow God for the heart. You're able to see. And because he turned your lights on, you're going to be able to pull other people out of the fire and turn their lights on so they can come out of that blind place and see. Other people are going to be blind, walking walking like a sheep to slaughter, walking to it, and you're going to be able to tell them, like, oh, man, wow, I can't believe that I was following that. That is what is about to happen, right? And so God is preparing you because this is the future you're about to walk into. Not a few years. I'm telling you, this is what's, finna, this is what's happening right now and finna move forward in our immediate future. Not near. I'm talking about immediate future. Let's keep reading. Biden regime removed Biden regime's uh, regime moves forward with U.S. Central Bank digital currency so they can ban since and shut down accounts of boisterous conservatives and starve them out. This article was posted uh, by Jim Hoff, September 18, 2022. So let's read. Last July, PayPal partnered with the notorious far left anti defamation league to determine who can use their services. Wow. The partnership was announced on July the 24th with the company's claim that they are going to investigate how extremists and hate movements in the United States take advantage of financial platforms to form the activities. Sad. Of course, ADL has been known to ban to brand anyone who supports Donald Trump or hold views to write, write or to write of Carl Max as an extremist. Did somebody just say something? It shows you're still on the Biden article. Okay. Uh, okay, can you guys see this article that I'm currently scrolling on? Or maybe I've seen a message late. Okay. Of course, the ADA has known to be a uh, brand in. Okay, let me keep reading. Okay, the Gateway Pundit is one of the. No, we're not seeing what you're. We're not seeing what you're reading. Okay. Uh, okay, give me one second. Let me. Uh, give me one second. Let me stop sharing and go back into it. I don't know why it's doing it's some good stuff. So, can you guys see that? Let me see. Um, it just said, it just Lord, you're not sharing right now. Okay, give me give me one second, sis. Give me one second. Give me one second. I'm sorry about this, my brother and sisters. Uh, uh give me one second. Hopefully, hopefully to get that right. I don't know. Let me let me. I know you know too. I'm gonna uh, exit out some of these things that I am because maybe because I got some of these things up too. Maybe that's right. Can you guys see now? Yeah. It's starting, it says starting screen sharing. Okay. Yeah. It's so cycling yeah. right now. Man's up. Let me see. Um, it's up right now. Okay. It's up right now. Okay. Okay. So let me just let me go back to it. Yeah. I don't know what's my, my, my computer is. It's, Wow, the way it's acting up, <laughs> man, I rebuke the enemy, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. And uh, this is good stuff that we all need to hear. So just bear with me, my brother and sister. Just please bear with me. Please bear with me. No, I think you're good now. Oh, you think I'm good? Yeah, because uh, with you guys, I I can't see it. Like, I, uh, let me see. Like, it's showing me something different on my screen. Give me one second. I know you guys seen it, but it's. I guess it's freezing up. But I'm going to keep reading if you guys can see it. Uh, the Gateway Pundit is one of the, uh, uh, let me see, Gateway Pundit is one of the uh, top 250 sites in the United States and one of the top news websites in the country today and had over 900 million page views. The Gateway continued to grow despite constant tax sphere of social media. Okay, I'm, I'm getting reading. They did not give us a reason for banning. They say it's contractual contractual right to cease doing business with you pursuant to PayPal's user agreement. The Democrats has partnered with big tech, big pharma, and big media to stifle, censor, silence, punish, harass, ban, and silence conservatives on every prominent social media platform. Several conservatives have been banned from banks and jobs due to their political belief. That's sad. Americans who oppose the ex experimental vaccine have lost their jobs to government and teaching. Even insurance companies are denying coverage to conservatives. Now the Biden regime is working to create a national digital currency for the United States. Let's keep moving forward. The White House reported, President Biden often summarizes summarize his vision for America, one word, a, possible, a possibility. A digital dollar may seem far-fetched, but modern technology can make it a real possibility. 
A United States Central Bank digital currency will be a digital form of the US dollar. While the US has not yet decided whether it will pursue a CBDC, the US has been closely examining the, impl the implication of an option for ensuring issuing a CBDC. If the United US pursued a CBDC, there could be many possible benefits such as facilitating efficient and low-cost transaction, fostering greater access to financial system boost and economic growth and supporting the continued centrality of the U.S. within the international financial system. However, a U.S. CBDC could also introduce a variety of risks as it might affect everything ranging from stability of the financial system to the protection of sensitive data. Notably, these benefits and risks might vary significantly based on how the CBDC system is designed and deployed. That is why Executive Order 1467, ensuring the responsible development of digital assets, placed the highest urgency on research and development efforts into the potential design and development option of the US, the, of the US CBDC. The Executive Order directed the Office of Science and Technology Policy to uh, policy OSTP in consultation with the other federal departments and agencies to submit to the president a technical evaluate, evaluation for, the, for a potential US CBDC system. Today, our OSTP is published its report, uh, technical evaluation for a US central bank digital currency system, which lays out policy objective for a potential US CBDC system and analyze the key technical design choices for US CBDC. The report also estimates the technical feasibility of building a CBDC minimal valuable product and describes how a US CBDC system might affect federal operation. The report makes recommendations on how to prepare the federal government for a US CBDC system. Importantly, the report does not make any asset assessment or recommendation about whether the US should pursue a CBDC, nor does it make any decision regarding a particular design choice for the potential US CBDC system. Does anyone really believe the communist left would not use such a system to punish their political enemies? Absolutely, they would. Okay. And so, uh, and so my brother and sister said, of course they will. They already are. Has anyone counted the number of jailed JCIS activists who never walked inside the US Capitol of January 6th? Uh, Democrats would do anything they can to destroy anyone on the right who gets in their way to trust. Uh, and so, what I want to point you is a, uh, to trust dr Grifter, Joe Biden, or Democrats with a digital currency is naive. To say the least, it would be another tool in the arsenal to punish the star out the political opponent. Now, watch this. What I want you to look at is just not Joe Biden or pro Trump. The Bible told us that this type of system would come and said that no one would be able to buy or sell unless they had a bark of the beast. So it has to be a system in place that will control the financial assets of the world to, be, to bring it up on the enslavement of a mark. This is what this digital currency is about. And so this is bigger than Joe Biden, this bigger than Donald Trump, this bigger than Republican, this builder, bigger than uh, uh, Republican or Democrat. Brothers and sisters, this got to do with people's soul. Why? Because the, the digital system itself is not the mark, but they enslave in the world into a system that can be controlled by the mark. Oh, did you catch that? The digital system itself is not the mark, but it's, it's, it's preparing the world, it is preparing the world to be enslaved by the mark. So the system itself, system itself is not the mark but the system itself is bringing the world into a place that it can be enslaved by the mark, right? And it's very important, why? Because this is a future that we are walking into, not a distant, and I'm telling you, people will lie to you and say that, hey, and I'm gonna say it this way, some people will lie to you because some people know what I will, but some people don't know. And so let me say it this way. My brothers, so some people will tell you this because they don't know, but my brothers and sisters, this is not a distant future as some may think. This is coming, watch this, watch this immediately. This is coming, watch this immediately. This is coming in our immediately near future, the great tribulation that come a couple years away. This is a future you've been head into and watch how we transition to 2023. Watch how the world get more wicked. You're gonna be like, what? What just happened? You're gonna be like, man, it's happening overnight. And I'm telling you, this is the future that you walk into. I know this is not a sexy message. I know it's not a pretty message. 
But brother and sister, it is a true message, right? And because I, number one, I don't want God to be mad at me. And I love him. And I want to break his heart. And I don't want to see my brothers and sister die because they don't know what is going on or fear grip them in a way because they was not expecting these things to happen. But these things are coming, my brothers and sisters. And this is, what you, this is what leaders like Joe Biden are talking about this week. These are what these people are actively talking about this week. Uh, and stuff like that. Uh, and so I want the Lord want us to be aware, my brothers and sisters. Okay. And so let me take some of that down. Let me go to another article. Minister, what the Lord been saying? Uh, why is it's crazy? What is going on? I ain't even got, I ain't even got a lot of lot of articles up. But my, it's crazy. It's crazy how everything is just wow. It's crazy. It's crazy. Just bear with me, my brothers and sisters. I'm trying to do the best I can, but everything just keep keep locking up but he don't want me to he don't want me to share what he don't want me to he don't want me to show what i'm showing today but he do not want me to show today but i don't blame everything on the devil the devil is not everything we don't give him no credit no glory but some things something he he, he does try to attack intentionally okay uh and so and i, I i'm gonna fight i'm gonna try to get 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 y'all as much of this as i can my brothers and sisters and hopefully, uh, and hopefully that y'all able to see, because uh, uh, I got a few more things I want to say to y'all, but I just genuinely don't understand why uh, it's doing what it's doing, uh, the way it's doing it. Okay, so let me let me scroll let me let me scroll down a little bit. Okay, okay, I got that. Okay. We talked about Putin earlier. Let me just show you this quick article. Putin's threatened nuclear war while calling up 3,000 reserve troops. And so let me show you why Pete Putin is threatening nuclear war. He said, Russia Vladimir Putin Putin double down on the credibility of his threats to use nuclear weapon for Russia's self-defense in speech on Wednesday morning, in addition to calling up hundreds of thousands of troops for battle. In the largest escalation since Russia's initial invasion of Ukraine in February, Putin made good on a partial mobilization for 300,000 reserve and special operations personnel and an executive order signed Wednesday. So this man just signed an executive order on Wednesday to gather up 300,000 reserves Reservists. Now watch this. If you've been in the army, now I ain't been in the army. Now I know there's a such thing as active duty and there's a reserve, right? People that they call in if I'm right. And if I'm not, y'all correct me because I know some of y'all have been in the army. Uh, matter of fact, let me see. Uh, if you can speak, sister, uh, can you, what's the difference between the active and the reserves? I don't know if she can speak. But I know she was in the army. But the di uh, I hope I'm saying it right. Uh, the difference between the active and the reserve is the reserve is the is the people is the people they call is the people they call when uh, uh, when everything is going wrong when it, it ain't, the, the war is not going as planned and I'm not being as successful. So we're gonna call in the reserves because we need help. And so this man is massing up 300,000 reservists to help fight in Ukraine because of the sophisticated weapon that has happened. Okay? And so I, I hope that I got it right when it comes to reservists. So hopefully I did it right. <laughs> but he's calling up reserve people that is not, I guess, uh, active, in, uh, active in it, but is in a reserve list. Can everybody still hear me clearly? Yeah, I see I'm going. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Now watch the Israeli... Oh, and Sister King, did I say it right about the reserves and active? The reserves and active? Did I say it right? Okay, I don't know if she can respond. Okay. Uh, it's really. I'm sorry, what you said? Did I say it right about the actives and reserves in the army? Like the active, the reserves are when, when, a, when a nation go to calling on the reservists, is it because they need some help that everything is not going right with their active military? You come in kind of in and out. Um, I mean, I think if you're saying it, what's the difference between active and reserve? Reserve, yeah. Yeah, the reserves. Hey, they do. <laughs> well, I mean, we're like full time, I guess you say. Uh, uh, okay, you you going, you going in and out. Ah, I wish it wasn't going in and out. I want you to explain it for me, but it's okay. I, hopefully it'll get clear at the end. I'm gonna move forward and hopefully get clear at the end and we can talk more about it. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, is written, now, this is another thing, the future we're going into. Now, the book of Joel said, the book of Joel said that um, I will judge these people for part of my land. This happened this week at September. Now, why is it important? Because we know that Abraham was signed beginning begin the final seven, but we know in this final seven year period, there's going to be a third temple. So you're going to walk into a future too, where you're going to see the third temple is going to be built and the Antichrist is going to stand in that temple and one world religion about the, about the surface. This is a future for to walk into, right? And so God told us in the seven year period that there will be a, that, 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 Many will sign on into this court, but also there will be other, uh, that Israel and the Palestinians uh, will come together, right? And so right now, watch this. You got a leader, the prime minister of Israel, came to the United Nations and called for a two-state solution to part the land of Israel. God said, I'm going to judge them people for parting my land. Second, Joe Biden himself, the leader of America, God said, don't part my land. We got the leader of America saying that I support part in the land of Israel. That made God angry. Why? Because God said, don't part my land. So we got a leader of America trying to part the land of Israel. God said, I will bless those that bless Israel, Israel and I will curse those that curse Israel. And we got a leader of America saying that I justify, I support a two-state solution. So you got a leader of America and even a prime minister of Israel himself saying he support a two-state solution when it should not be. And this happened this week. And so these are the things, these are the signs that we are headed toward the second coming of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Last week, we had the red heifers. The red heifer will be the animal that sacrificed, that will be sacrificed, that allowed the Jewish people to make sacrifices. So we got all this happening at one time. We got the red heifer just landed in Israel. That's going to allow them to sacrifice the third temple. We got Israel now building a third temple train. In April, it's going to be released with a take people from the Temple Mount right to right from, from the airport, right to the Temple Mount where the third temple will be in Jerusalem. And now we got the prime minister of Israel himself saying that he backs a two-state solution. And then we got President of America saying that he backs a two-state solution. Wow. And this is happening. Jesus said, when you see these things coming, know that this is showing that my return is near. Look up because your redemption is near. It said, Israeli prime minister Yalupia expressed his support for his two-state solution. Uh, two-state solution to the Israel, uh, two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in his speech at the UN General Assembly on Thursday. This just happened yesterday. It's the first time Lapid, as the Prime Minister, has given a speech back in the two-state solution. Lapid made clear that the establishment of a Palestinian state must have security and arrangement for Israel. And also the first time since 2017 that an Israeli Prime Minister had publicly expressed support for his two-state solution. Wow. Former uh, Israeli Prime Minister being actually expressed support for his two-state solution solution in May of 2009. He repeated his support several times, including at the UN, but backtracked and didn't express clear support for a Palestinian state after former President Trump was in office in 2017. What he's saying, in an agreement with the Palestinians based on a two-state salute, two-state for two people, two-state, two people. So what is this going to look like? God said that in the book of Zechariah that the Antichrist is going to make uh, it the battle of Armageddon. So what is the battle of Armageddon? The battle of Armageddon is about the one world government, the United Nation, the Antichrist trying to take Jerusalem from Israel. So if they're trying to take, uh, take Jerusalem from Israel, that means Jerusalem is going to remain up under Israeli control. So that means Israelis is going to have complete sock. Com complete sovereignty over Jerusalem, meaning it's going to have com uh, uh, complete uh, control over com uh, Jerusalem concerning its security, that Jerusalem is going to remain upon the Israeli control. But they're going to part the land, so meaning they're going to divide the land, but Jerusalem is going to remain upon the Israeli control. So it's going to have two states in a land that is a part of the authority overall uh, overall up under the Israeli. So in this in this document that they signed, they're gonna they're gonna say that hey, let's not lose momentum, right? We can't sell to Jerusalem right now, so it's gonna remain upon the Israelis, but let's not lose the work that we got. So they're gonna come together and agree to part make two states, but they're not gonna sell to Jerusalem. So Jerusalem is going to stay up under Israeli control. Jerusalem is going to stay up under Israeli control. And they're going to try to come back to this thing at the end of this seven-year period. They're going to try to come back to it at the end of this seven-year period and say, hey, look, when it get close, after the two witnesses finish their testimony, there's going to be two men of God in Jerusalem. After the two witnesses finish their testimony in Israel, the Antichrist is going to kill them. 
And once he killed them, watch this, the, the Israeli government is going to be talking with the United Nations. And as they're talking with the United Nations, they're going to be saying that, hey, you have to, you're going to have to uh, give over uh, Jerusalem according to, you have to give up, you're going to have to give over Jerusalem according to international law so the Palestinians can get their portion of Jerusalem. Jerusalem said, it, the Israeli the Jewish people is going to say that we would never give you Jerusalem. And so they're going to come and try to take it based upon their union resolution 2334. They're going to come and try to take it. And so all of these things are happening right now. The resolution is already in place for the battle on giving to happen. We're just riding on that road to it. And so the, why does that happen? Because this is the future you're walking into. People don't understand what type of prophetic time we're living. We're not waiting for the last. The last days begin when Jesus was sacrificed. Those were the last days, brothers and sisters. We are in the end time. At the culmination where Jesus finished, finished all things to break in his thousand year reign. Okay. It's in a, uh, and so peace is not a compromise. It is the most courageous decision we can make. Peace is not a witness. It abides the, the, within the, it, embodied within the entire might of the human spirit. It's right now you're seeing the speech of the prime minister of Israel. And so the Lord wanted me to show you these things, my brothers and sisters. And because uh, uh, these are the things that are happening. Okay? Watch this. British prime minister tells Lapid she is reviewing relocation to the UK embassy in Jerusalem. And we had Canada, US and celebrating. This is the prime minister of Israel say so he wanted back to two-state solution. Prime Minister Minister uh, Liz Truss told Prime Minister Yalapid, now why is it important? Because the book, of, the book of the Revelation tells us that the, the mouth of the one world government will be the lion. And so you got things shifting in Great Britain when you got, uh, uh, you got uh, King Charles just came into power. And then you got a new prime minister, a woman that is in power. Watch what has happened. Um, that she is reviewing relocation of the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. A spokeswoman from, for Down Street told the Guardian that Trust told Lapid about her review of the current location of the British embassy in Israel. So these next couple months, in October, November, December, we finna see catastrophic things, catastrophic shifts happen on the political spectrum of the world. Hear what the Holy Spirit say. And in these next three months from October, November, December, you're about to see catastrophic things happen uh, politically on a political stage that's going to take the world uh, into a, 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 a global digital era in 23 to 2023 into the implementation of the new world order through globalism that will lead to the mark of the beast of the great tribulations. This is the future we're walking into. And we have to understand, okay? And so the Lord wanted me to show y'all, bring, bring to you guys what has happened is so watch this, you won't be uninformed, right? Okay. Give me one second, my brothers and sisters. Let's see what, let me see what I, what, what is the article? Okay, no, that's the two-state solution. But it's been a big deal. It's been all over the news, him back in the two-state solution. So I just make sure I got everything the Lord, Lord wanted me to say to y'all. I said that, what is this article? Okay. Okay, I said that article. Okay, I said, spoke about that. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going through my article, make sure. Okay, let me see, is this ABC News? Okay. It was September the 16th. Treasury recommends exploring the creation of a digital dollar. So I'm just showing you the Biden administration move one step closer to develop the central bank digital currency. Now the digital dollar saying it will help reinforce the US role in the world stage, okay? On the world stage, okay? We talked about that earlier. So I'm trying to make sure I get all the articles out of the way. This is this the governor of, uh, I froze again. Um, uh, give me one second. Biden administration um, was talking about, uh, one second. Well, Stacey Abrams, the governor running in Georgia, I'm praying that she don't get in her office, man. We got to vote the Bible, but this is someone that believes in abortion. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a sad, it's a sad thing, man, what is going on, man. Uh, give me one second, brother. So I'm trying to get y'all all these articles that I can because y'all really need to see this. Um, and we give me bad with me. I'm, I'm fighting, brothers. I'm fighting, trying to get it to y'all. Um, 
got that. We covered that. Stacy Abrams. Okay. Give me one second. Okay, Stacy Abrams. I'm just gonna show you this is this is somebody that's wonderful governor. Stephen Stacy Abrams believes in abortion until the time of birth. That's sad. Someone that was running, Stephen Thaston Abrams, a Democratic candidate for gover, governor in the state of Georgia, recently distinguished herself from Republican incubator Brian Kemp by insisting that she supports abortion even until the time of birth on the certain condition. That's sad. Somebody that, see, we gotta be careful who's voting in office, man. On Wednesday, Abrams made an appearance on a controversial women talk show, The View. In that conversation, Abrams positioned herself as radically pro choice, calling abortion restriction artificial timeline. I believe that abortion is a medical decision, not a political decision, April said, and arbitrary and arbitrary political defined uh, timelines are definitely uh, deep, uh, deeply, our timelines are deeply problematic problems because they ignore the reality of medical psychological, psychological issues. For example, she continued, a six week beat Weak band tells women they have to make productive choices before they know they're pregnant and arbitrary extends into this artificial timeline. What I believe she had is that it's a decision that should be made between a woman and her doctor that vi viability is metric. And if that woman's health or life is in danger, then ability to extend until the time of birth. So this woman believe a, a woman could be 40 weeks, 40 weeks, like time of birth, they can kill the baby. Well, that's sad. A baby, uh, it's, 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 it, should, it should never be from the jump. But you you go even further and say at the time of birth, this is someone that is running for governor in Georgia. That's why we got to read our Bible and know the prophecies of the Bible. Come midterm election in November, we need to be reading our Bibles. We need to be looking at the prophecies of the Bible, seeing what agenda is and see who we vote in the office. We don't put our hope in man, but we need to be wise in what we're doing because we actually are put the people in the office that's going to actually persecute us. Because we 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 so we can get in our flesh uh 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 and 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 vote on our color and end up man. Uh, uh, and end up putting people in the house that's going to perse uh, persecute us, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, there's something that will happen. There's some uh, judge rule. Um, I, I like the judge rules. NYP can't fire a cop who refused every experiment of that team. Experiment vaccine. On Tuesday, court in New York ruled that the NYPD could not terminate an officer who refused to take the shot and had sued the city over its mandatory COVID vaccination policy. This may help the nearly two dozen police officers who might have brought similar lawsuits, according to the reports post. A 40-year-old police officer had his request for a religious exemption granted after the city failed to provide specific information for rejecting his appeal. See that? He said religious exemption. You see, he said because of religion. And see how he stood firm? See, see here's the thing. I don't know what he believed, but what I'm saying that I'm using this as a sign that the church, we need to stand up. We don't need to lay down and cow. This is the time for us to stand up in America. 40% um, of America will be that remnant and God calling us to be strong because he's opened us a window to do his will in this hour. Okay? Last but not least, this is what Joe Biden said. This is what I want you to know uh, about uh, the hour we're heading into. Okay. Joe Biden pledges U.S. troops would defend Taiwan. Much of this surprised everyone listening. Look at it. This happened Sunday, 60 minute interview of Joe Biden and Scott Bailey aired. My colleague Bob Hoge did a post in a news release. Press pack C. Biden warns Putin against using nukes. Don't, don't, don't. Their Biden warns Russia autocrat Vladimir Putin about using chemical attack nuclear weapon to, to, to stave off his abject defeat of Ukraine. The real news we see tonight. Okay. So you see him on these news channels, okay? We should, what should Chinese President Xi know about your commitment to Taiwan? Pele asked the president. We agreed that we assigned onto a long time ago, the president said, and there is one China policy and Taiwan makes their own judgment about their independence. We are not moving, we're encouraging their being independent. We're not that, that's their decision. But would, but would the US force to defend its island? Yes, if in fact, there was an unprecedented attack, Mr. Biden said. So I'd like Ukraine to be clear, sir, Biden Pelley said. U.S. forces, U.S. men and women would defend Taiwan in the event of China Bay. Yes, the president said. You see what has happened? So this man said something going with Taiwan, the United States would defend Taiwan. He also is saying this, if there's a nuclear war in Ukraine, America would be involved in that. 
Do you see how America is being pulled on all sides into a global war? And so um, the Holy Spirit is showing us the future that we're headed into. This is the future, my brothers and sisters, that we as people are headed into. And we must understand uh, uh, what is going on. Man, this thing keep freezing up so bad. It's all good though. It's all good. I'm gonna keep pressing and fighting through it. Because you have to know that this is the future that we are preparing for my brothers and sisters. And we have to be sober and we have to be vigilant. Uh, because these are the times, these are things that are going to happen. Watch this soon. This is happening in our immediate future, my brothers and sisters, okay? And I, um, uh, forgive me again for, uh, for uh, I have to keep freezing because they keep locking up on me, okay? I just, uh, I just have to get these things out to you. I'm gonna show you the thing. Leading Transgender Health Association remove age minimum and new guidelines. Just want to show you the leading transgender health association has released its much anticipated new guidelines. One aspect noticeably different from previous edition is that the explicitly state minimum age recommendation for minors to obtain puberty blockers across sex hormones and surgery have been removed. That's sad, man. The new guidance also suggests that if parents do not affirm their child newly chosen identity, the state may be able to intervene in order to assist with the child transition. Do you see that? So if, if us as Christians said that, hey, our children is not, if, if our child is battling with a spirit, an evil, perverse spirit, we said, no, that's not right. That's not what God wants for you. And if the child still want it, they said that, hey, the state may be, in, be able to intervene and assist your child beyond your control. That's sad. Now, this is what they're doing. And I think they said in Virginia or Virginia, whatever, the, it may be in Virginia, the World Pro Professional Association for Transgender Health Standards Care 8th edition in the National Journal of Transition was published in the same journal of 7, 15, September 15, which removed sexual pertaining to the minimum agent of gender affirming and medical and surgical treatment for adolescents. My brother says, these are the things that are happening. These people want to control, the government want to control our children to, to they want to tell us what the, our children should do. And, 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 and this is not far-fetched, why? Because the book of Revelation 13 said, no one will be able to buy or sell unless they have a mark. So God told us that this is gonna be a controlling government, that they're gonna push their agenda on your kids, on you and your kids. And if you don't, if you try to make their kids follow, if you try to make your own kids follow different than their agenda, then they're gonna persecute you and make your kid follow. See, that is what, that is a this, the corrupt agenda that this administration, don't think the, the White House are pushing these things. This administration is what's pushing these things, pushing these things. This administration, I said, you can't be pro Biden or pro Trump. It's about being pro Biden, Biden, pro Bible. This administration is pushing these things in the land. Why, why are they doing it? Because it's coming from the United Nations. Okay. Okay. It's, it's, it's not a game. It's not, it's not, it's, it's not a game, my brothers. It's, it's a sad thing. Okay. It's a sad thing. I got one more article after this, and we're done for today. Okay, we, okay, we, okay, we've seen that already. We've seen that one already. Okay. Okay, we, we're done for the day, my brothers. We're done for the day. We finished up for the day. Um, I pray that, uh, um, my brothers and sisters, I thank you all for joining us today. I pray that this word was a blessing to you, and I pray that it leads to everlasting life. My brothers and sisters, this is a new series. I pray that you, if you're able to come gather every week, because it's really going to prepare your heart for what is to come and what is happening. And this series is called Prepare for the Future. And the first installment of this first message is what you're about to see. So this series is telling you this first message was to tell you what you're about to see. Oh, but man, when you come back next week, we're gonna take it to a whole nother level. Come back next week. This week you seeing what you're about to see. Man, next week, God is going to take us even higher in what we're about to see, but he's going to take us, he's going to reveal some stuff in a deep way that Satan will have nothing on you. He would not be able to deceive you, but this is what you're about to see. This is only the beginning of what you're about, about to see, and God's going to take us deeper so you'll be ready, so you and your family, so you can fight for your children. You see what the government is trying to do to our children. This is going in some of going on in some of our school systems. It's time for us to pray for our children, pray for all ourselves, fight for our children, fight for our family. Family, how do we fight with the Bible? The word of God is going to be the only way to fight this, this, this corruption. And you have to have a solid foundation in Christ to walk in victory. We have already won, but we have to walk in him to walk in victory. Okay. Uh uh, sister uh Kenya, what would you say earlier about the difference between active and reservist?
Hello, good, e good evening. Um, I mean, what I was saying is, um, like the, uh, of course, the uh, active duty um, soldiers. I mean, I, I think that the question you're asking, active duty soldiers are full time soldiers, you know, 24 7 soldiers, whereas the um, National Guard and the Reserve are, are not. The, um, the National Guard is activated um, um, and ran by the, the state. Um, so, you, you know, they do like the little national disasters or whatever. Not to say that they don't can deploy, you know, mm -hmm. overseas and stuff like that. But majority of the National Guard does like the local, that's the, like the main job they do majority of the time. And then the, the um, reserves are federally, uh, federal, you know, um, federally ran um, by, the government, by the government. Okay. But all of them, you know, of course, active duty can, reserve can deploy. Um, as as they are needed, you know. Okay. Reserve and National Guard. Okay. So what would call what would cause a country that is in a war to call on reserves? Um, well, like I said, the first choice is gonna be the active duty, you know. Right. Say if we need more help as far as active duty, you know, um, then they'll call on the, you know, at the reservists to come in, the the sisters or whatever. And then you know, the active reserve, they kind of call them like I guess you would say active um at the reserve. Amen. Amen. Thank you for giving us that wisdom. Sis. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Thank you. So, oh, no. Did you have something else you had to say? No, I understand. Of course, they, you know, they train to do um, what we do uh, on a normal basis, on a full-time basis or whatever. So they train in, in um, you know, like they have their like um, one weekend out of a month that they got to train or okay. and two weeks out of a year, you know, they have to do training. So they're, they have their regular jobs doing, doing the normal time. Okay. Oh, you finally broke up. Okay, it probably broke up. It's not good to say. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, okay. No, thank you, sis. Thank you, sis, for your wisdom. And so that means what's going on with Russia, they need some help bad to the point where they call them 300,000 reservists. And watch this, some of us have been in reserve concerning the church. We need to come on, we need to be active duty. Some of us have been in reserve in the church. It's time now for us to be active duty because this is a time for war spiritually. Um, brother, sister, this is all I have for you today. Come back next week so you can continue to prepare for what's gonna happen in the future so you won't be caught off guard or afraid. Um, AC, brother, do you got anything you wanna say? Not today, sir. God bless you, man. Appreciate you. Okay. Uh, let me pray us out, my brothers and sisters. Um, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, hold up. Brother Paul, are you able to pay? pray, Paul? Is Paul on? I don't know if he ever, he might not be on. Okay. Let me go ahead and I'll go ahead and pray us out then, my brothers and sisters. Um, dear Heavenly and Wise Father, uh, we repent of our sins. Please give us our sins. We come for your throne. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this word today. We thank you for your life. We thank you for your heart and revealing it to us so that we may know where we're headed, so that we won't be afraid, so that we won't be fearful, so that we won't lose heart, so that we won't uh, lose heart or be a, uh, or, uh, lose our faith or walk away from our faith, but actually it will cause us to even more be stronger in you because you revealed it to us before it happened. Father, we pray that your word will be anchored in our heart. It will bear fruit, Psalm 100, Psalm 60, Psalm 34. King Jesus, we thank you for revealing this to us and let it cause us to get ready to wage war, to preach the gospel like we never have preached it before, to love you like we never have loved you before, but be ready to endure every trial because you are with us. King Jesus, we love you. We thank you for having such an, a merciful and beautiful heart to reveal your will, to reveal your will to us. And Lord Jesus, we love you and we thank you for giving us your spirit. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' person, name we pray. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, I love y'all so much. Thank y'all so much for joining and I'll see y'all next time.